Hi Game Programmer! This tutorial will teach you how to detect a collision between images and rectangles. We will then make the collision detection more precise by using two rectangles to represent just one of the images. Collision detection is a fundamental game programming concept and can be used to detect when a player touches an enemy, whether a vehicle has hit a boundary, or whether a character is close enough to interact with an item. First, we'll need our variables. Let's start out with two rectangles, one for the asteroid and one for the rocket. Then we'll need two texture 2D variables, And we're going to need a color, because what's going to happen here is that when the rocket hits the asteroid, they'll, bur they'll both turn red, but they'll start as white. And we're going to use the keyboard as input. You could also use the gamepad as well. Go ahead and pause the video and create your variables. All right, well, let's go to the initialize method and construct our rectangles. Let's also load our images. Got to remember to use it as a string. do the same thing for the rocket. But wait a second. Where are our asteroid and rocket? We need to add them to our content folder. Well, here they are. They're already in the content folder. Let's just associate them with our program. Rocket, asteroid, add. Excellent. Now we'll go to the update method to add the movement and collision code. First thing we'll do is we'll get the state of the keyboard. All right, and now let's use the keyboard's W, A, S, and D keys to move the asteroid. And we'll need to do the same thing for our rocket. Go 
great. So now our keyboard can control our asteroid and rocket. This would be a great time to pause and type up the code that you just saw in this video. All right, well, welcome back. Let's get on to the code that de actually detects the collision. We're going to add this to the update code. And so if the asteroid's rectangle intersects, isn't that nice? There's a rectangle intersects method. So rocket rec. Then we'll change the rec color to color dot red. Otherwise, just stay color dot white. Lastly, we'll add the code for drawing. Start our sprite batch. And tell our sprite batch to draw the asteroid pick. inside the asteroid wreck with the wreck color. And we'll do the same thing. But for the rocket. And we can end the sprite batch. All right, well, if we typed everything up correctly, this should work. Let's press F5 and see what happens. There's my rocket, and there's my asteroid. And they hit each other, and they turn red. Awesome. Now, I want you to notice something. The rocket's not actually touching the asteroid, yet it still turns red. That's because we're using one rectangle to approximate, approximate the, all the edges on the rocket. But as you see, the rocket's not really rectangular shaped. So that's a problem. We need to use two rectangles, or maybe even three or four, to approximate the rocket edges more accurately. Let's take a look at what I mean by this. Here's a picture of the rocket. Now, if we use one big rectangle, there's going to be this white space here, or this clear space, that is going to be considered part of the rocket when it isn't. So instead, we're going to use two rectangles, rectangle number one and rectangle number two, to more accurately approximate the edges of the spaceship. To do that, we'll need to add two more rectangles to our variables. So let's add rocket rec one and rocket rec two. And let's also construct these rectangles. Let's move down to the initialize method to construct those rectangles. And so I have already measured the rectangle uh, dimensions for rectangle one, this long one right here, and rectangle two, this one right here. By the way, I'm using Microsoft Paint here. Microsoft Paint is a, is a great tool for doing simple graphics. And here I'm using the, um, the excellent ruler and grid layout to measure the dimensions of my rectangles. So I've already pre-measured them. I'm going to go ahead and construct them. Great. 
Now let's add the rectangles to the movement code since they have to move as well. We keep the original rectangle since that is used to draw the entire image. The new rectangles need to move as well so that the collision detection is updated with new locations. For example, right here, instead of just the overall rocket wreck y direction being decremented, let's also decrease the rocket wreck 1, its y coordinate by 1 as well, and do the same thing for rocket wreck 2. Go ahead and do this for all the other directions as well. Now we'll replace the one rectangle collision check with two rectangles. Rec1 or Rec2. But definitely not the overall rectangle because that rectangle is not accurate, accurate enough for the shape of our rocket. Well, everything else stays the same. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, well that works. Let's see what happens here. Well, look at that. Whereas before, a collision was being detected, it's not now because the edges are approximated more accurately with two rectangles. You can get even more accurate with more rectangles or move to a type of collision check called per pixel collision. As you see right here, they're still not touching really, but they're registering a collision. So per pixel collision actually takes into account the actual pixels and you don't use rectangles. So there you go. You just learned some simple and advanced collision detection and collision detection is an important technique in the world of game programming.